अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल शिव अरुणाचल Ramana, in a sense, was the latest and probably the most famous of a whole stream of extraordinary saints who have been drawn by the power of this place for at least, I would guess, 2,000 years. It, it's one of the five principal lingams of South India. This is the fire element, the place where Shiva resides. In the last 15 years, there's been an explosion of Western spiritual teachers, many of them devotees of Papaji, who was himself a direct disciple of Ramana. And these people are traveling throughout the world offering satsang. Their message has touched a growing number of Western seekers, and it seems increasingly important to open up the ancient teachings so that this wider audience can understand their meaning. I would like this film to contribute to making the teachings of Sri Ramana more accessible and in this way also the ancient teachings. I would like it to challenge entrenched ideas and encourage a healthy spiritual debate. So when Ramana Maharshi was 16, living at home with his mother and brother, he suddenly had an experience where he thought he was going to die. And he lay down on the floor and he accepted that death. And as he lay there accepting the death, he realized that it wasn't the body that was dying he realized that something was happening which he didn't really understand and he simply accepted it. This is a, somehow a rare case where somebody has spontaneously awoken at a very young age without really being in a situation to understand what was happening to him. But it ha just happened. You can say it happened by grace. But in that moment he was able to look. He somehow had the, the wisdom to be able to simply look what was happening and to accept what was happening. And so he would have had a big opening and we can call that self-realization.
it. What was unique about Ramana was that at age 17, he actually was able to extract the knowledge of who he was from the experience. Now the word Ramana actually means what? The actual meaning of the word Ramana means the one who revels in the hearts of everything. Now what would that be? Awareness. That would be the self. I think one reason people really like Ramana because he was like a regular guy, more or less. I mean, he did sit in his underwear, you know, in a, on a white sheet and do nothing, basically, which is not exactly normal. But for Indian saints of his caliber and his character, that was extremely normal lifestyle for him. He was off doing some work and enjoying it, whether it was cooking or building a brick wall. Somebody would come and say, some visitors have come from Hyderabad, and his face would drop, and he said, oh, you know, goodbye, I have to go back to jail. And he'd, sort of, <laughs> he'd, he'd, he'd go and sit on the couch and tell people how to get enlightened. <laughs> he, he really enjoyed cooking. He was the, the head cook for, I'd say, at least 15 years. He got up at 2 o'clock every morning to cut veg and supervise the cooking. When the, when the buildings were going up, he was engineer, architect, hands-on every day. Nobody really seems to know what enlightenment is, but if anybody has some image of it, yeah. it is of a man sitting, doing nothing, being very blissful. And what you're describing is completely different from that. There's nothing to do with what you do or don't do. Sri Ramana became known for his teaching of who am I, which uh, in another way we can call self-inquiry. He had the idea that you can constantly keep your mind on the source inside yourself rather than always externalize it to objects or to people. Ramana then was asked what is the means for constantly holding on to the thought, who am I? When other thoughts arise, one should not pursue them, but should inquire, to whom do they arise? So basically, if you, if you got very, very quiet, you can even see thoughts arising. It's almost like they come out of the ocean. You know, you're looking at the horizon of the ocean, and you can almost, you can see these thoughts like little, like little paths that just come out of nowhere, a thought. It's just a thought. And what happens? We take this thought and we say, my thought. And so what self-inquiring is suggesting is that you don't take the thought. You don't take it. And if you don't take it, then it's actually no problem. The thoughts come, the thoughts go, thoughts come, the thoughts go, no problem. When you really see this, you can see that it's an illusion. You can see for yourself. It's not like anybody needs to tell you. This is something you have to see for yourself. Nobody actually can show it to you. Thank mm -hmm. you.